So in this video, we're going to talk about MOS capacitances. And so why do we care? Uh, why do we care? This is a pretty difficult subject. Um, in my opinion, the capacitance of the MOSFET is probably the most challenging uh, out of all of the concepts to master. So uh, it's why do we want to invest the time on this? Um, and the answer is that capacitances limit how fast your circuit can go. So they limit the speed of your circuit. So you can't design an infinitely fast op amp, for example. Uh, that just, say, say you've just got a simple op amp. This cannot be infinitely fast. This has speed limitations. And so you need to understand what those speed limitations are going to be. And ultimately those can be traced back to the capacitances. And you need to understand that when you make changes in a device, so say you've got a certain width MOSFET and you wanna increase the width for various reasons, this is going to increase your capacitance. And so it's going to decrease your speed and you need to understand how much. So when you make these design choices, how does it affect the speed of your circuit? And if you understand capacitance, then you understand speed. And so it's an incredibly important part of being an effective circuit designer and being able to trade off, um, being able to make good trade offs and understand where they exist. So that's why we're studying capacitance. And so uh, now that we know why, um, what do we mean when we say capacitance? And where are all these capacitances located? Um, well, those are both good questions. And let's answer them just by first drawing out the simple structure of a three terminal MOSFET. So we've got we've got our metal up here. Let me just uh, erase this awkwardly hanging uh, line. We've got our oxide here. We've got our bulk or body or substrate, whatever you want to call it. Um, we've got our source and our drain. So this is our drain. This is our source. And the, the distinction between drain and source is arbitrary because, I mean, electrons can flow in either direction. And these are typically N plus regions or heavily doped N regions. And this is, we're going to deal with a P-type bulk, or this is a, an NMOS transistor because its channel is electrons. And so we're applying a some voltage to the gate. And so we're interested in these device capacitances. So where, where are the capacitances? Well, if you look really close, uh, if you look really close, there's this overlap here um, between the gate and the oxide and this well. So we're going to expect, since there's free charges, so positive and negative charges that can move around within the metal uh, however they want, and the, the negative charges are the major charge carriers in metal. So the electrons really are what's moving around and the positive charges are just revealed by the movement of electrons. Um, but there's charges to move around however they please in the metal. And similarly, there's charges that can move around however they please in this substrate. So when, or in this, uh, in this source region, in this N plus well. So we imagine if we apply a voltage VGS, there's going to be a rearrangement of charge. So there's going to be more charges that appear very close to this edge and more charges that appear very close. Well, we want that to be, uh, we want those to be electrons, very close to this edge. And that means that there's an electric field between the two and a capacitance. And you might say, well, isn't this like a really, really small distance? Yeah, it is small, but you need to consider all of the, all of the physical capacitances in the circuit. This will turn out to be important. This is actually important. And it won't turn out to be that small. Um, at least usually not small enough to ignore. And so this is one capacitance. 
Uh, there's also a capacitance over here in this little region of overlap between the metal oxide and this drain region. And it's these are just your basic uh, two plate parallel plate capacitors, except this region, this plate, this top plate is a metal, and this bottom plate is an N plus region. But that doesn't matter. Uh, electrons are free to move within this N plus region because we've got a lot of them. Uh, and electrons are free to move in the middle. So this acts exactly like a parallel plate capacitor. And so this overlap region on in both the source and the drain region, that's our first source of capacitance. Uh, what are some others? Well, um, let's, let's just erase these real quick. Remember that we also have, uh, since these are PN junctions, and this body is usually at a voltage of zero, or the bulk is usually at a voltage of zero, we've got these depletion regions here. We've got these depletion regions that form around these N plus regions, because this is just a di these just form diodes. They're sort of uh, circular diodes, but they're still diodes. And, and these are reversed bias diodes. So, there's a capacitance associated. We can draw that as a physical capacitor if we like. Similarly, we could draw this as a physical capacitor. I just find that that gets a little messy. Uh, so I just prefer to explain it in words. But we've got this separation. So we've got this separation between all these negative charges in this N plus region that are free to move around and all these positive charges in the bulk, because this is a p-type bulk uh, that are free to move around. These positive charges can move however they like. So similarly, we, we also get a parallel plate capacitor here. So here, this parallel plate capacitor between this N plus and this P region, this is an N plus metal plate. So our metal plate is actually an N plus region. But similarly, that doesn't matter. There's free charges that can move around. And this is a p-type plate. So this is also a metal plate. And so you can think of this as uh, this is just a region in which no mobile charges exist or free space or some dielectric. Uh, so you can think of this just as a parallel plate capacitor. And same over here, same between the drain and the body. So those are all the uh, major capacitances of the MOSFET, but there's one more. Um, there's actually one more, and that's perhaps the most obvious one, but it's also the most difficult to analyze. And that's the capacitance between this gate, this metal here, and the p-type substrate. Because remember, uh, what defines a capacitor is there's free charges to move around in each region, and there's some separation between those charges. So there's negative charges on the metal, there's positive charges in the substrate. And so we would expect that there's a capacitance also between this metal and this p-type substrate. And here that parallel plate capacitor, uh, this one plate is a metal, and this is a p-region for now. However, uh, remember that this region might have, it might have negative charges inside. It might have, uh, you might have a depletion region in this channel as well. You might also have negative mobile charges. So immediately this, this capacitance here, this, uh, let's call it CGC, the capacitance between the gate and the channel, this is complicated. And so we're gonna spend a couple videos discussing this capacitance here, but it depends on the state of this uh, this substrate directly beneath the gate. And that's that's the underlying idea. So in this video, we've introduced all the capacitances. We saw that there's some physical capacitances between the, uh, between the gate and the drain. So between this metal, oh, between this metal region here and the drain, between this metal region and the source, between this source and the bulk, between the drain and the bulk, and between the gate and the bulk. 
And in the next few videos, we're going to be analyzing each of these in detail. And the picture might look really complicated right now, but so long as you understand the basic idea behind a capacitor, that a capacitor is just formed when you have a separation of mobile charge. So you can have negative charges, as in the case of an n-type region. You can have positive charges, as in the case of a p-type region. You can have a metal, which generally has electrons that can move around. You can have anything that contains mobile charge. Uh, anything that contains anything that contains separated mobile charge is a capacitor. And so if you keep this simple picture in your mind, equals capacitor. And if you keep this simple picture in your mind, then all this complicated, uh, the complicated physical nature of the capacitors becomes easier to understand. Just understand that it's separated charge. And it doesn't matter what kind of charge is separated. It could be positive charges separated from positive charges or negative separated from negative. Now you might uh, you might be a little confused by that statement. Uh, you might say, well, what if we've got two, uh, just two n-type regions? So we've got a bunch of electrons over here and a bunch of electrons over here. Then can't we not have uh, positive charges on one plate and negative charges on the other plate like we need for a capacitor? Well, no, because these electrons, if these electrons leave, these electrons leave this surface, then we're going to be left with positive charges which are immobile. So it doesn't matter uh, what the sign of the charge is on either side, so long as they are free to move around. And so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you all next time. Thanks.